One of the most asked questions I receive is, should I make any improvements before selling my house? Well, the correct answer, it's maybe. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Realty Group, and I wanted to chat with you today about what improvements, if any, you should make before putting your house on the market. So what's the reason that that answer is maybe? Well, quite frankly, it's because each situation is different. For example, you're not gonna to wanna to refinish the hardwood floors on a house where somebody's gonna come in and completely renovate it, like this one. Redoing the hardwood floors or doing exterior painting or interior painting or really anything to a home like this isn't gonna provide you any return. So what should the golden rule be when it comes to making improvements before putting your house on the market? You should only make an improvement in two cases. One, is that money and that time invested, are we gonna have a return over and above of what we're investing in it? Or two, is it an issue that will come up in a home inspection? And even here with the home inspections, I need to be a little careful because oftentimes I can actually negotiate an amount less than what it would actually cost to do that repair. As a great example, I recently sold a house where the seller, he felt that he needed a new furnace. It was getting old, it was depreciated, it was at the end of his life. Well, this furnace was gonna cost anywhere in the ballpark of 15 to 20 grand. So we decided it was best to put the house on the market. And if it came up in a home inspection, then ultimately we would we would deal with it. Well, it did come up in the home inspection and we were able to negotiate an amount far less than what it was gonna cost, more than half of that $15,000 number, plus a home warranty. So in this case, the seller walked away with, with an additional $7,000 worth of proceeds because he didn't do that improvement beforehand. And that's why each situation, again, is different. So what are some of the other home inspection issues that we should talk about? Well, ultimately, those are the smaller stuff ideals, like maybe broken window seals or um, loose cabinet doors that are hanging off a little bit, or maybe plumbing or electrical issues. Really, the, the stuff that ultimately a buyer can see as they walk through the house that could diminish that first, you know, the first impression, which is ultimately the, the most important impression. So let's talk about some cosmetic improvements that you can do that will ultimately help you maximize your sales price well it's no secret that it's what's on the outside that counts when it comes to selling a house a buyer they're not really concerned about what's on the inside of a property they expect when they hit the switch that the light switch is gonna work and they expect that well probably not that roof but a roof of the house that they ultimately buy is going to keep the water from coming in right they expect certain things so when they are buying a house they're looking at more of the cosmetic cosmetic offerings that that house is is, is giving so the first and most important thing that you and any buyer or excuse me, seller can do when it comes to selling their house is, is decluttering. Decluttering and depersonalizing are the two highest return areas that you can do when it comes to selling your house. So what is decluttering? Well, it's basically throwing away all the stuff that you're not gonna take with you and maybe even then some taking the stuff that just doesn't really add any value to the room and putting it in storage. So depersonalizing, well, depersonalizing is taking off, you know, very fam if you have a ton of family photos or if, if you have a wall that happens to be pink because that's what your, your daughter really wanted, right? So depersonalizing is taking away some of those very personal things that we really love. Speaking of colors, by the way, the other biggest improvement that you can uh, do in order to get maximum return is actually painting. And when you're painting, you wanna choose neutral colors, but you need to be a little bit careful when you're choosing neutral colors because today the grays are in, but tomorrow it, it might be the light beiges and you know, my daughter would be very disappointed to hear that because, well, purple's her favorite color and she would paint the world purple, but that's a whole different story. So what are some other projects that often people talk about? Well, they talk about redoing kitchens. This is a place that you need to be really careful because if you're spending a fortune redoing a kitchen, get ready to open up Pandora's box because now you're gonna need to do the kitchen and then you're gonna need to do the baths and then you're gonna need to do the walls, re repainting all the walls and, and uh, refinishing all the floors in order to truly maximize that return for the work that you did on the kitchen. So what are some things that you can do in order to refresh the kitchen get a high return, but not necessarily open up that Pandora's box. Well, there are things that you can do in kitchens, for example, changing hardware, updating the hardware actually on the cabinets. A lot of people are painting cabinets white in order to give them a fresh, new, bright look. And another thing a lot of people do is maybe change over from laminate counters to granite counters. You do those three things, to most buyers, that kitchen's actually gonna look pretty darn brand new. So, 
we've talked about the big things. We've talked about the little things. We've talked about some of our highest, you know, uh, areas. So ultimately, you know, let, let's talk about it. So what is the answer? What should I do to be before selling? And quite frankly, there really isn't a simple answer to that statement. Each situation is very different. So one of the biggest factors a person needs to think about is, okay, is this investment going to get me a return? But you also need to put in the disruption to life you know, uh, value to the equation. So it's gonna cost me this much, but hey, redoing a kitchen is not an easy job. So it's gonna disrupt my life for the next three weeks because I'm not gonna be able to cook in my kitchen. Plus I'm gonna have contractors in every single day, right? There's a lot of hassle to that. And that is part of the equation that you ultimately need to figure out. Is it worth it to you? You know, this, is, uh, this question is really why when it comes to listing your house, why it's so important to call a real estate agent so far in advance in, that, in, in the listing process, you wanna to talk to them early in, in that process. And you know, that's one of the reasons why we will actually bring in a stager in order to sit down and chat with homeowners because we only want them to do the things that are gonna maximize their return. We don't want them to, to focus on things that just quite frankly, a buyer's not gonna care about, right? So, you know, just keep that in mind. If you have any questions about specific things that you could do in order to maximize your sales price, then please let me know. Again, my name is Jeff Chubb. I'm with the Chubb Realty Group and we're brokered by eXp Realty. Um, you can always give us a call at 617-480-2600 or you can shoot me an email at jeff at boston2.com. Thanks for watching. I look forward to chatting with you soon and I hope you're having a great day.